So my recent video talking about why I switched over from Instagram over here to YouTube is doing really well. It's did really well. It's continuing to perform really well. It's on a great trajectory and you guys seem really interested in learning more about this topic. So here I am making a sequel video as I always advise you guys to do. And today I want to talk a little bit about some things that you should really know about YouTube before you embark on your own journey and how to set goals and shift your mindset so that you don't burn out and that you actually succeed on this platform as a creator. And the first thing that you really need to know is that it takes time. I am a little over a year into my YouTube journey. I haven't reached 1,000 subscribers yet or 4,000 watch hours. I'm at least a few months away from being monetized at the very least. And I've made over 50 videos, over 50 like full length videos. It takes time. It's like a part-time job that you're clocking in a bunch of hours at, but they're never paying you. Uh, and you're like sort of hoping and praying that they will eventually pay you, but there's no guarantee of that. And you'll be really surprised by the fact that you like know theoretically that it will take you a lot of time. But in practice, you'll be really disappointed if you set lofty goals for yourself. And I know because I did this, <laughs> I totally thought I was going to be able to monetize in like six months and then I wasn't consistent, I wasn't having good quality kinds of videos, and I didn't meet that goal and I still haven't met that goal. So the really important thing is that you are realistic, even conservative, when you are setting your goals for your performance because I don't want you to set really lofty goals, fail to meet them, burn out, get disappointed in yourself, and quit. Because a lot of creators do this and I don't want you to end up like that. So you really, really need to fully internalize that it just takes a lot of time. I think the average YouTube creator takes like around 90 videos where they're monetized. That's a lot of videos, that is a lot of hours. I've recorded this video two, three times now. I Hopefully I will get this time right. But I mean, I do tons of takes. I spend so many hours editing and you'll be really surprised by how much work it takes once you dive into it, especially because as a beginner, you are going to be making loads of mistakes because I know I did. Am I telling you all of this to crush your dreams? No, definitely not. I just want you to be realistic about where you're gonna set your goals. And this is really important. If you are starting a channel to build your audience or eventually make money from it, and that's your main ambition, that's your main motivator, uh, I'm not going to tell you to not do it, right? Those are my <laughs> motivations too. I totally get it. A lot of creators here on YouTube will tell you that if you wanna make money and that's like one of your main motivators, then you shouldn't start a channel. I think that's not true. I do think though, however, that they are sort of right in that making money as a motivator won't see you through to the end. You need to find some joy in the process, some joy in the process of making all these videos and creating them because it's a lot of work. Like I was saying, it's a ton of work and you're gonna put in a lot of hours and you're not gonna see very good results in the beginning and you have to keep going anyway. So you need to enjoy some part of the process. For me, I like to make my videos really aesthetic and when I make painting process videos, I think about the video as like an extension of the artwork itself. How can I imbue my artistic style, my design philosophy, uh, my values into the entire video, into the way that I set the scene, into the way that I color grade my footage, into the way that I edit, all of these different things. I try to make all my videos an extension of my personality and an extension of the artwork. So it really just has a very coherent kind of vibe. And I really enjoy doing that. So I really suggest that if you are just starting out, you find a way to make it enjoyable for you. Because if you wanna make money, it is going to take a long time. And so really it's in your best interest to find a way to enjoy the process. A lot of creators here on YouTube that talk about how to start a channel and grow will also really advise you to start with what you have, your phone. and. Okay, I did that, I did that. I followed their advice and I did that. And I'll tell you guys, I made some of the worst quality videos you'll probably ever find on the platform. You can scroll down to my channel and see them. They're really awful, okay, they're very bad. And once I got this new camera, my refurbished Canon M50, I noticed a distinct uptick in the quality of my videos, but also the performance of my videos. From June to July, I've been able to double my channel views. I've been able to see a really above average increase in subscribers gained. And that is a distinct performance <laughs> upgrade from what I was seeing previously when I was just using my phone. But I'm not going to tell you that you can't make quality content with what you have, but you are going to have to work harder. I was living in Alaska for a good chunk of the time that I was making those videos, and it was during the winter, uh, and there's not a lot of sunlight in Alaska during the winter. It gets dark super, super early, same as here in Minnesota. And if you are filming in the winter in the period 
of the year for you when you don't get a lot of sunlight, using your phone is going to be really, really difficult because the iPhones especially don't have great light sensors for video and you're gonna have to work a hell of a lot harder to light your videos correctly. Right now for my setup with my Canon M50, I'm using a studio light that I got from Amazon that's super cheap that I don't recommend off to the side, uh, a lamp over here, a light overhead, and I'm sitting in front of this window and I'm lit really well. But if I was using my phone, I'd probably have to have at least one or two more lights to really make this setup work. But the benefit, of course, to using what you have, what you carry with you all the time every single day, is that you don't have to get anything new. That's a distinct advantage, and it really lowers the barrier of entry to starting your own channel. But I just want to let you know that if you're making videos with your phone, that's all that you're using, and you're not paying a lot of attention to the way you light your videos, the way that your audio sounds, etc., you are probably not going to perform really well. And in contrast, if you come out of the gate with excellent video, excellent audio, excellent lighting, you are probably going to perform much better, much faster, just because your videos are higher quality and people really respect that, especially as a new creator. I get comments all the time in my videos telling me how high quality they are ever since I upgraded to this camera and really started paying attention to the way that my audio sounds. I definitely don't want you to go out and buy a $600 setup and then find out six months later that you hate YouTube. Uh, don't do that. But once you figure out this is for you, really, really consider making that investment because it will speed up your growth trajectory so much if you really put a lot of love and care into your content. The two key ingredients to becoming successful here on YouTube and growing as a creator is quality content and consistency. If you can nail those two things, you have got it in the bag. It is only a matter of time before the algorithm starts picking up your content. And so the thing that I would really suggest for new creators is to approach making videos with the love and dedication that you do your artwork and that love, that dedication, it will shine through in the finished product and people will really appreciate that. They'll really connect with you. Don't try really hard to become someone that you're not on camera. Just be your open, honest, authentic self and people will resonate with your message and they'll resonate with your art and you'll have everything that you need to succeed. It's right there. It's all inside you. All you need to do is just really pay attention to the quality of your content and really try to be consistent as much as you can. I uploaded very sporadically in the beginning. People did not really watch my videos very much, especially in the beginning, even though I had a decent following over on Instagram because my content wasn't a high quality and because I wasn't being consistent. But as soon as I upgraded to this camera, as soon as I started uploading once a week and then twice a week, I've noticed a distinct uptick in my performance and my growth. I think that is really what you need to succeed. Everyone says this, <laughs> everyone hears this all the time from other growth YouTubers, but like, have you actually internalized it? Have you actually started taking their advice? Because they're right. But there's a difference between hearing that and not doing it versus actually doing it. I promise as soon as you start implementing these tips, you will see a improvement in your growth if you just give it time and you stay consistent. In my recent video that I mentioned at the beginning talking about why I switched over from Instagram over to YouTube, someone commented, I'll try to find it and show it down here, that creating is really scary for them and that they constantly struggle to deal with all of these anxieties and all of these fears when they are creating and that's why they haven't started a YouTube channel because they're really intimidated by being vulnerable on camera and showing their faces online and I have those struggles every single day every single time I try to film a video um, I'm constantly trying to push through those fears and here's the thing uh, I eventually realized that I could let my insecurities control my life I could let my thoughts about how people are totally going to see this one zit on my face, totally obsess over it and comment mean things about me. I could let that control me and control my decisions. Or I could say, no, sometimes my thoughts do not accurately represent reality. And I could push past those insecurities and sort of live in discomfort, but actually try to achieve my goals. And that's what I'm doing. I'm pushing past all of these insecurities, all of these feelings of discomfort every single time I try to film a video because I want this to be my life because I really want to make a living for myself as an artist and I think this platform is a way for me to do that and no one is going to hand you your dream life no one is going to help you achieve your goals only really you can do that and um yeah so I would say if you feel insecurities if you feel anxieties um yeah same <laughs> Uh, but you just have to keep doing it anyway, and it's scary. It is definitely scary. Uh, I feel a lot of low self-esteem, a lot of anxiety, a lot of burnout. I've talked about that before on my channel. You have to keep creating anyway, any way that you know how. You need to make it work for you somehow. Definitely, you know, don't push past what you're really, really comfortable with. Don't do anything that really makes you overwhelmed but don't let those insecurities prevent you from achieving what you actually want to achieve. 
And I have so many resources here on my channel talking about how I deal with burnout, how I started my YouTube channel, talking about my results after my first year. And you can find all of that in this playlist right here where I talk about growing your audience online and starting your own YouTube channel. And um, yeah, if it's something that interests you, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. And I hope to see you over there. All right, bye guys.